Have you ever felt anxious or depressed after scrolling through social media? Do you think social media sets unrealistic beauty standards? Can you imagine your life without social media? It's a predicament many of us face daily, isn't it? Welcome, dear listeners, to a discussion that's as timely as it is critical. The impact of social media on our mental health. In our hyper-connected world, social media is more than just a tool, it's a way of life. Its addictive nature, however, can have far-reaching consequences. A seemingly innocent scroll through your feed can sometimes leave you feeling inadequate, anxious, or even depressed. Social media, with its carefully curated lives and relentless comparison, can chip away at your self-esteem. It can stoke the flames of anxiety, leaving you feeling restless and discontent. Depression, too, finds fertile ground in the isolation and negativity that can fester online. But that's not all there is to it. Let's delve deeper into this social dilemma and uncover the truth behind social media and our mental health. Before we continue, a quick reminder. If you find our content helpful, please don't forget to subscribe and like our videos. Your support means a lot to us and helps us grow. Every subscribe, every like, every comment fuels our passion to create more insightful content. It's a simple click for you, but a giant leap for us. Remember, our channel thrives on your support, and it's because of you we can bring these discussions to the table. Now back to our topic. Let's explore how social media promotes unrealistic beauty standards. How often do you come across picture-perfect models on your feed? Does it ever make you feel inadequate? This isn't just about browsing through social media and seeing a wave of shiny happy people. This is about the impact these images can have on our self-esteem and self-worth. Social media platforms have become a breeding ground for unrealistic beauty standards bombarding us with images of people who seem to possess an impossible level of perfection. These images, often heavily edited or filtered, present an ideal that is simply not attainable in real life. They represent a distorted perception of beauty, one that has been carefully crafted and meticulously maintained. A click, a swipe, and there it is. The perfect body, the perfect skin, the perfect hair. And suddenly our own reflections seem lacking in comparison. Teenagers in particular are vulnerable to these unrealistic beauty standards. At a time when they are forming their identities and understanding their place in the world, they are faced with a barrage of images that suggest they are not good enough as they are. The pressure to conform to these standards can lead to negative self-perception, anxiety, and even depression. The impact extends beyond the individual. It seeps into our collective consciousness, shaping societal norms and expectations. It's not just about looking a certain way. It's about fitting into a mold that has been set by a virtual world, a world that thrives on likes, shares, and follows. But here's the thing. These images, these standards, they're not real. They're carefully curated illusions, designed to captivate and convince. They're not a measure of true beauty or worth. The constant exposure to these so-called flawless images can take a toll on our mental health. But it doesn't stop there. Ever had a negative interaction on social media? Ever felt belittled or bullied? These experiences are more common than you might think. Across the globe, millions of people are engaging with one another on social media platforms every single day. But not all of these interactions are positive. In fact, the potential for harmful exchanges, particularly among teenagers, is alarmingly high. Imagine this. You're scrolling through your feed when suddenly, a harsh comment pops up. Someone you barely know is criticizing your looks, your opinions, or even your lifestyle. You feel attacked, misunderstood, and isolated. This is a scenario that many young people face and it's not just distressing, it can be downright damaging. These negative experiences on social media platforms can lead to feelings of anxiety and depression. It's like walking into a battlefield where you're constantly on guard, always ready to defend yourself against the next attack. The constant pressure to present a perfect image, coupled with the fear of judgment and rejection, can take a serious toll on mental health. The harmful interactions are not limited to direct attacks either. The passive-aggressive comments, the silent treatment, the subtle exclusions, they all contribute to a hostile environment that breeds self-doubt and insecurity. And let's not forget about cyberbullying, a dark and destructive manifestation of harmful interactions. It's an epidemic that's been sweeping across our digital landscape, leaving a trail of emotional devastation in its wake. But here's the thing, it's not all doom and gloom. Yes, social media has its dark side, yet it's important to remember that these platforms are tools and like any tool, they can be used for good or ill. It's all about how we choose to use them and respond to the challenges they present. Social media has its dark side, but remember, it's not all doom and gloom. There are ways to navigate this digital landscape safely. So, 
How can we stay connected without getting sucked into the negative aspects of social media? Well, it's not about quitting social media cold turkey. Instead, it's about learning to navigate this digital landscape safely and mindfully. Let's talk about some strategies that can help. First, consider limiting mass sharing on social platforms. Remember that not every thought, meal, or moment needs to be broadcasted to the world. It's okay to keep some things just for yourself, or to share them only with your closest friends and family. Next, set boundaries for your social media use. This could mean designating certain times of the day as social media free zones, or setting a limit on how many hours you spend scrolling through feeds each day. There are plenty of apps out there that can help you track and manage your screen time. And speaking of scrolling, try to focus on positive interactions. Engage with content that brings you joy, educates you, or inspires you. Unfollow accounts that make you feel bad about yourself or that constantly stir up negativity. Remember, your feed is your space. You have every right to curate it in a way that benefits your mental health. Another important step is to question what you see. Social media often presents a highly curated, idealized version of reality. Always remind yourself that what you're seeing is not the whole story. Don't compare your behind the scenes to someone else's highlight reel. Lastly, if you're feeling overwhelmed, it's okay to take a break. Try a digital detox for a day, a week, or however long you need. You might be surprised at how refreshing it can be to disconnect and engage with the world directly. Remember, it's not about completely avoiding social media but about using it wisely and mindfully. It's about making social media work for you, not the other way around. After all, it's just a tool. And like any tool, its impact depends on how we use it. So what do you think? How has social media impacted your mental health? It's time to flip the script and hear from you. Do you have a story to share or maybe a tip on how to navigate social media safely? Let's get the conversation started in the comments section. Your experiences and insights can make a world of difference. Thank you for your contributions. Don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends and family. Stay healthy, stay happy, 